Hey guys, what's up? I'm going to show you how you can do some quick gesture motion studies using Blender's Grease Pencil. And I'll be using reference from a YouTube account called Motion Actors Inc, which has a lot of gesture reference caught on film. In a program called PureRef, I'm just pulling the key poses out of that YouTube video and just finding strong key poses and in-betweens to reference from when I'm drawing. I'm just kind of showing how these are very nice arcs with this kind of whip motion that I kind of want to pull from into my drawing as well as these strong poses. I don't want to overdo the drawing so I'm limiting myself to 15 to 20 key poses and in-betweens that kind of describe the motion that I'm studying. That way it's easier for me to understand the workflow as well as present it simpler for you guys. Okay so first we have to set up Blender in a way that is functional for what we're doing. So one thing we want to do is make sure that our viewport aligns with the camera view because at the end of it, the camera is what is going to render out our animation. So one thing we want to do is click the outside window for the camera and make sure we can adjust it to become parallel to our drawing plane or where we will input our grease pencil object. If you look at the upper right, there is a window, transform window where you can manually adjust the, the values or you can just use your scroll wheel to kind of adjust the camera in place and then adjust the rotation. So we're just going to switch that to 90, 0 on the other axis and then 90 on the Z axis. We can head over to the viewport display to turn off and toggle some display options. Like I'm going to turn off the floor here real quick. We're going to change the world color to white so that we have better contrast to our grease pencil object. And this way it starts to feel more like a drawing page. We're going to go into our scene properties and change the color management to standard. And the reason we change it to standard is because we don't want our lighting to affect our grease pencil object. We want it to pop out as much as possible. So we're just going to go ahead and delete that default cube because we don't need it right now. There's a useful feature under the view tab called lock camera to view, which locks your camera's view to the viewport window. We're going to go ahead and add the grease pencil object by doing shift A to bring up the add menu, go into grease pencil and add in our stroke. Sometimes our stroke won't line up with our camera's view so we kind of have to orient the camera's view using the scroll wheel to match that the grease pencil object and then we can fine tune it in the item tab under the transform window. Like discussed earlier we want our grease pencil object flat to our camera view that way when we're drawing it feels like we're drawing on a flat plane and not something skewed at a weird angle. We can input our own values to make sure that the grease pencil sits in a way that we want it to in the camera viewport. It happens often when you accidentally move the camera you kind of mess up the orientation of the grease pencil to the camera. Uh, one thing you can do is you can lock the location and rotation of your camera so it, it's less likely to do that. If I exit out of the camera view using numpad 0 for a moment, you can see the positioning and orientation of the camera relative to the grease pencil. And I'm just toggling on the floor so that you can kind of see the distance. You can toggle back into the camera view and we have it set up so that the grease pencil is completely parallel to the camera plane from which we're drawing from. One thing you can do is you can parent the grease pencil object to the camera. That way, if you move your camera around, your grease pencil object will track with it. Um, that's dependent on what you are studying or drawing. Sometimes you want a tracking shot, so this works well in that scenario. When you move the location of the camera, the grease pencil's location also moves with it. As you can see, when I'm in my camera viewport and I rotate around, my stroke should remain parallel along with it. It's gonna go ahead and toggle the grid and the floor off just to keep the workflow clean. Now we can get into the drawing. Uh, first we gotta select our grease pencil object by left clicking it and then we can enter draw mode. As you can see we have two layers already by default on our grease pencil object. We have a lines layer and a colors layer to make it simpler for us the motion study. We're not going to be adding too much color, we're just going to add a single value that sits behind the line. I loaded in some of my custom grease pencil brushes in here. I'm going to use a brush I made called the Ink Pen Better Taper, which basically tapers the default pen a little bit better. And I'll kind of use it in the demo here. I'm going to go ahead and plug my other videos on custom grease pencil brushes. I got 
uh, about around three of them out right now so go ahead and check those out if you're interested in that subject. Here I'm just kind of testing the brush making sure it works and behaves how it's supposed to. One cool thing that you can do is you can set your eraser to stroke and it'll completely erase strokes which is a time saver when I'm drawing a lot of lines and I just want to delete one right away. Here I'm just checking again making sure that I can get the size to adjust to how I want it. Here's a cool thing that I just learned recently. You can drag photos or videos right into your window and it will load it into the world space. And I'm just positioning this reference in the world space so that it sits behind where my drawing is and I'll just keep it there for a reference. Usually I have a program called PureRef that I use in the background to keep all my references. But for display purposes, it's easier for me to just drop in my reference into the world space and just have it in the background. All right, we're going to go ahead and shift add to add a grease pencil object and add in a stroke just so we can orient the grease pencil plane to our camera correctly. Uh, we're going to just push this reference back in space a bit. Uh, in our timeline, you can see our grease pencil has added in the keyframe for our layers. And we want to make sure our eraser is on stroke. One important thing we can do is make sure we lock the layers that we're not using. So I'm locking the colors layer here and making sure the lines layer is highlighted and selected. We're going to turn on another useful feature called additive drawing. It allows you to duplicate existing keyframes into the current keyframe that you're drawing on. This in combination with the record button toggled in the timeline allows you to record any drawings that you make in individual keyframes. All right, so I'm drawing kind of stiff and clean here because I want this first pose to kind of be really good proportionally so I can kind of build off it. But also, uh, I still have kind of have to warm up my drawing hands. For some parts of the video, I'm just going to speed it up around eight times just so that you don't have to sit and watch me <laughs> erase and draw the same strokes over and over. Uh, and it'll, this will help kind of shorten the video length a bit. As you can see, I'm kind of drawing in this kind of segmented way. And there is a reasoning behind that, and I'll get to it later in the video, but technically you kind of want to leave these lines separate so that you can manipulate them easily later on. Sometimes you want to adjust how far the grease pencil object is to the camera, so one thing you can do is unparent it from the camera and just adjust the camera accordingly. And moving more forward with a scroll wheel or scrolling back to move back. And I'm taking my time to kind of segment these lines in a way that I can edit them later with the edit tool. Just like in any normal drawing situation, you're going to find times where you just don't like how the drawing looks. And using the tools that Blender has to just redraw those forms to a better situation for yourself. We're going to go ahead and delete this existing reference so that we can add in a new one. Okay, now I'm going to load in the reference for the next key pose. And so I'm just in the world space and I'm dragging in my photo reference like last time. I am going to toggle back into the camera mode in a sec. Because we have an edit mode in Grease Pencil, now I can use it to move, scale, rotate whatever lines I want to. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to scale in the z-axis, just kind of forces squash on this mannequin and then I'm gonna draw in the spots where I think I need to redraw so I, I see that his pose is kind of crouching a bit more so I'm just positioning the figure in a way that adjusts certain body parts because the rotation of some of the forms is still the same I can reuse my existing drawing for the basis of this pose with this workflow I'm able to save time and energy on drawing and get to those key poses a lot faster by not having to redraw every single line and track every single movement and spacing of them. Here I'm just toggling the onion skin opacity just so it's not distracting to me when I draw, but it's still visible enough for me to understand where the next line should move for the next pose. As you can see, I'm kind of spacing out my key poses by eight frames per drawing. That way when I play it back, it's I can visually understand what's going on without having to wor worry about the timing. 
I'm going to share with you a cool tip. You can use the lasso tool to get into those tricky spots where you need to select your lines. But if you can't select all of your vector points of your stroke, a simple thing you can do is just press L and that will select everything for that stroke. And then you can just use G to move, pivot, and rotate that stroke however you like. Here you can see where the lasso can be useful in scenarios where the lines are touching each other. Instead of going really close and in like this, you can just back off and use L, the hotkey, to, to select everything. There are certain times where I can't reuse certain lines just because I'm looking at the reference and I see some rotation in the form that I need to just straight out redraw. And that's where your drawing skills come in handy. Just do your best to redraw the figure and forms in space as you can so that way the movement is tracked correctly and you're not just relying on the digital tools to do the work for you and plus it's just good animation and gesture practice in general to draw the milk call once said i'm in the habit of studying the action in anything i see and figuring out why things move as they do I always try to figure out the mechanics of it. I think it becomes second nature to you, and though it's not the most important thing, the showmanship and personality and the thinking that the characters do are the most important things. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and repeat the process of switching out the reference. Uh, we're just gonna go ahead and delete that reference from our blend file and then add in the new one. Use numpad zero to exit out of our camera view real quick. Drag in our reference, put it behind our grease pencil layer. Okay, so I've slid my marker over to frame 16, which is 8 frames apart from the last keyframe. And I'm assessing that this pose is slightly moving towards the left. So I'm just dragging my character mannequin over to the left a bit for the spacing of it. And that helps me visualize where the next form should generally be. But because these forms don't necessarily match the orientation of the reference, I might just have to redraw certain parts of the body for it to track well. So I've come to the realization that I can't use the last pose exactly for this next pose because of the rotation of the torso is kind of going into a three quarter view from our perspective as well as the arms are kind of moving more towards the left. So I kind of have to redraw the torso in a way that denotes that rotation. But it, it could be possible that I can reuse the legs. So I'm just keeping them in there for, for now and piecemealing the lines that I need to redraw. So I'm putting down the center line here just to show the, that rotation is a little bit more clear. as well as drawing this arm overlapping the, the torso. So although I'm not using the lines of the last pose, by using edit mode and positioning the spacing of it before I start redrawing it, it saves me a little bit more mental energy because I have already figured out the spacing of where I want the forms to be even though that the rotation of those forms are not correct. And now we can use this as practice time to draw our forms in space. The biggest thing here I want to do is just hint at movement. So for example the whip, I'm using strong S and C curves just so that it, it can hint at this kind of movement and snap that the whip has when he pulls it back. Uh, making sure that when I go down on the pose that there's also an up afterwards after the anticipation. And you can see here I'm just quickly flipping through the timeline to see how the movement plays out. And that's the cool thing about this process is that you just drag to flip. You don't have to you know manually flip pages or layers it embraces the digital nature of animation these days we're not in the past where it's a lot more unforgiving when something is not in the right place and it's just boiling with this tool in blender i think because it is more forgiving it aids as a better study tool for anyone who's trying to learn 
but I do believe that we are still on the early stages of what Blender Grease Pencil is. Um, so if you are trying to learn it, do understand that it is a new tool that people are trying to figure out still. But it is useful, like if you're just trying to study something like this, like a rough movement. It has benefits that a lot of other programs I think don't quite have yet. And because this is done in a 3D program, I can layer a bunch of 3D objects behind my drawing here just to show how transformative your 2D study could be after the fact that you've made it. And thanks for watching guys! If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. I've got other videos on other Blender topics if you're interested. I also have my Gumroad you can check out if you're looking for custom brushes or tutorials. Thank you guys for watching, have a good day. Yes, yes, yes.